Hello ladies and gel gentlemen, welcome to this video all about angles. Today we are going to be focusing on what we do when we are using radians along with how we convert between degrees and radians. So I'm going to jump right in. Now at this point we should be on page 11 in our notes packet, so please follow along with me. All right, first off, a couple of conversions that you need to make sure you are aware of. The main one is just the fact that pi is equal to 180 degrees, okay? This conversion is gonna be super important. If you have an angle that starts out in degrees, so I'm just gonna abbreviate that, you can use that conversion by multiplying by pi over 180 degrees, and then that will allow you to find the angle in radians. So if you have something in degrees, this is how you convert to radians, and then vice versa, if you're already in radians, I'm just gonna abbreviate that to rad, because they're totally cool, and you're really gonna love them. So, but, but obviously this is us getting out of them, which is sad, so it's a little bit mixed. I apologize on that. Point is, you would take 180 degrees and divide it by pi. So basically it's that fraction flipped. And then this, like I said, is how you're gonna convert back to degrees, okay? Now, the way that I think about it is whatever I want is in the numerator. So in that part that's green, the pi is in the numerator because I want pi in my degree, my, my measure. And 180 degrees is in the numerator for radians multiplying together because that's gonna get you to your degrees. So if that doesn't totally make sense, here, I'll show you exactly what I'm talking about right now. Okay, so I'm currently in degrees. So this is like 45 over one. I want to convert it to radians, so I'm going to do pi over 180. So that what ends up happening is I'm going to keep the pi, but I'm going to reduce this part of my fraction. So 45 and 180 are both divisible by 5, so I'm going to start with that. So 45 divided by 5 is going to get me 9, and 180 divided by 5. Now before you're like, ugh, Mrs. Fry, that's like a lot of math. Just break it down. 100 divided by 5. That's 20. 80 divided by 5, that's 16. So we have 36. Well, 9 and 36 are both divisible by 9, so we get 1 over 4. So this ends up being 1, sorry guys, 1 pi over 4. All right, now if you're already ahead of me on that, great. I'm just making sure everybody's keeping track. Okay, second one is the reverse. I want degrees, so I'm gonna put degrees in the numerator, and I'm gonna divide by pi. What happens here? The pi's divide out, and then I'm just dividing these numbers. 180 divided by nine. Well, 18 divided by nine is two, so this must be 20 degrees, all right? So I'm gonna keep rolling here, and I want you to hopefully maybe pause this video and try them on your own, okay? So you take a moment, pause, and then when you come back, the answers will be working themselves out, all right? Just take a moment and pause. All right, hopefully you took that moment because now we're gonna move right along here. So pi times 180, well, zeros go away because we're dividing by zero. And then 180 divided by 18, that's just going to be 10. Okay, so we're going to be left with 10 pi. All right, then our next answer, we're multiplying by 180 over pi to get rid of the pi. So that's gone. 180 divided by 18 is just 10 again. So what do we have left? It looks like we have negative 7 times 10. So we have negative 70 degrees, and that's totally fine. You were allowed to have a negative angle. Okay, now, these last two, these look a little funky, okay? Just a little heads up. They don't look like it, but they are in radians. Generally speaking, it's gonna be really obvious to know something's in radians because you're gonna see that pi symbol, or you're just not gonna see the degree symbol. That's the reality. If you don't see degrees, assume that it's in radians. So. These two angles are in radians, which means we're trying to convert them to degrees. So we're gonna multiply by 180 degrees over pi. So what we're gonna have here is negative 360 
degrees over pi. So that looks a little funky. You could approximate that with your calculator, but I'm just going to leave it right now because that's not the main focus of what we're talking about today. Um, same thing here. We're going to do 180 degrees divided by pi. So again, we're going to have pi in that denominator. And we're going to take 180 and multiply it by 3.6. So to make your life a little easier, just think about the fact that 180 times 3, that's 540. Here, I'll write a little note here. That's 540. And 0. 0.6 times 180, well, that's a little tricky. If you weren't sure about that, I'll just give you a little hint. That's 108. So we get a grand total of 648 over pi. Don't worry, that's a little bit of a stretch for our no calculator needs. All right, moving along here. There are four more questions here, but these are a little different. They are asking you to find one of the angles to a complementary pair. So I want you to find the other angle. Remember that the complement is angle plus, here I'll angle one plus angle two equals 90 degrees. So if you want to find the complement, let's say that's angle one, that would be 90 degrees minus your other angle. All right? And then down here, the supplement, we're talking about angle plus angle equals 180 degrees. So really the angle you're looking for is 180 degrees minus your second angle. And they don't, one versus two doesn't really matter. It's just two's the one you're given, one's the one you're looking for. All right, you guys pause, see if you can figure out what your complement and supplement are. Oh, one more thing that I forgot to mention. In fact, you may even want to write this up here. Just a little heads up. W pi is equal to 180, right? Well, pi over 2 is equal to 90 degrees. Okay, those are two things you might want to have in the back of your head. Especially because here, this could also be pi over 2 minus our angle or pi minus our angle, depending on what units we're in. We always want to stay in the units that we start in. All right, so like I said, pause, see if you can figure these out, and then come back and check your answers. All right, ladies and gentlemen, here are your first answers for the ones in degrees. I figured those are the, probably the ones you started with. All right, folks, now here's the work for the complement angles. So notice for the radians, I had to start with pi over 2. And I had to get a little bit of a common denominator here in order to figure out what the complement was. So in number 1, it ends up being pi over 4 because those are a fourth plus a fourth gets you a half. And then in number 3, I had to convert both angles so that they had a denominator of 6. So a little common denominator again. And then 3, ha three sixths minus 2 sixths gives us pi over 6, so 1 sixth. And then the last one that we're working with here, now we're taking pi minus 3 pi over 4. And this one's a little bit more uh, straightforward to turn into a common denominator. I just have to make it 4 over 4. And then when I do my math, 4 minus 3 gets me 1 pi over 4. All right, so there are answers for a complement or a supplement to those respective angles. All right. Last topic related to given an angle um, in standard form and working with radians. Uh, this is more of a review of that rotational stuff we've been talking about, but now we're turning it into degrees. So, or I'm sorry, we're not looking at it in degrees. We're looking at it in radians. So just to give you an idea of what that means you need to think about, you still want to think about this as zero. But now this part up here, you're thinking about that as pi over 2 and pi and 3 pi over 2. So now when we want to approximate, we want to do that thinking about radians, thinking about in terms of pi's. So like this one over here, you'd need to think of a fraction that was less than one half. And that can be a little tricky for our brains to think about. So I'm going to talk through this first one. This looks like it's pi plus, and then this distance right here, this reference angle, that looks like 
half half of a half that's a quarter so that looks like pi over 4 so that would bring the grand total for this angle to 5 pi over 4 because this is 4 over 4 all right I'll do one more for you this one right here this one actually looks like pretty much the same angle it's going all the way around pi but then that extra 5 pi over I'm sorry that extra pi over 4 the only difference is this one's negative. So this one's most likely negative 5 pi over 4. Now, if you were, weren't were 100% accurate with that, that's okay. Um, but we're just trying to get a rough estimate of where these angles are landing. Okay? So I want you to take some time to try these next couple. Again, pause, see if you can figure out the answer, and then come back and check your work. All right, folks, so as you can see, all that work is starting to get filled in here. And what I can tell you is that it, it looks to me like some of these angles land right in the middle. So I think for this third one, we would pick that our angle measure would be theta is negative pi over 4. So this one over here on the left, I kind of pieced it together by slowly rotating around. So we had pi, then we had another half of a pi, and then that looked like about halfway through the quadrant, so that's a fourth of pi. So that's how I got my grand total of 7 pi over 4, so that's that one. For this middle one down here, I feel like it's a little hard to tell if it's halfway or not. So if you said pi over 4, pi over 6, something in that vicinity, I think you're good. And then last but not least, I got around negative 7 pi over 6 for that last one. So, ladies and gentlemen, hopefully that explains sort of like how radians work a little bit and gives you a feel for how they are similar to degrees in terms of where their angles land and how to convert between them. Thank you so much for listening. Have a good one. Bye.